What the mainstream media was afraid to tell you about the news this week. This week, while the mainstream media was obsessing about President Trump mispronouncing Yosemite, here are the things that happened that really matter. Seven Democrat senators refused to condemn Antifa violence during a hearing in the U.S. Senate this week. While Antifa burns down federal courthouses, vandalizes private property, engages in looting of businesses, assaults police officers, and uses domestic terrorism to try to intimidate the public and politicians into giving them their radical leftist Marxist political agenda items, elected Democrats refused to condemn them. But did the mainstream media report on the Democrats' shocking enabling of Antifa violence? Nope, the mainstream media was silent. New York State invalidates 80,000 mail-in ballots, showing us exactly why universal mail-in voting is a dangerous idea. Universal mail-in voting is different than existing absentee ballot voting. When everybody automatically gets a ballot in the mail, it overwhelms systems like the post office and leaves tremendous vulnerability to fraud, whether it's through ballot harvesting or ballot piracy. And that's not even mentioning the incompetence of the post office disenfranchising tens of thousands of voters. This isn't just hypothetical. New York is the proof. But did the mainstream media report the terrible outcome of New York's mail-in voting? No, no. The mainstream media barely mentioned it. New data analysis by Jim McGresty at Just, Just Facts finds that public school funding per student averages 80% more than private schools. Agresti's study found, and I quote, the latest Department of Education data shows that governments spent an average of $14,439 for every student enrolled in K-12 public schools in the 2016-17 school year. In comparison, Just Facts estimates that private schools spent an average of $8,039 per student in the same year, end quote. This, of course, contradicts the left's narrative that public schools are underfunded compared to private schools. But did the mainstream media report this to you? No, no, they didn't say a word. The Ohio Liquor Control Commission approves Governor Mike DeWine's liquor sale curfew. According to Cincinnati.com, and I quote, Ohio Governor Mike DeWine called for an end to alcohol sales after 10 p.m. each night to help curb the spread of the coronavirus. Bars and restaurants will now have to do last call at 10 p.m. each night in Ohio any alcohol purchased by 10 p.m. will be required to be consumed by 11 p.m., end quote. It's amazing, isn't it, that the COVID-19 virus is so intelligent that if you drink an old-fashioned after 10 p.m., it will get you. But at 9.55 p.m., you're safe, thanks to Governor DeWine's dictate. Did the mainstream media report on how arbitrary and insane these draconian dictates are? No, no, the mainstream media is the faithful lapdog of the left, and they will repeat whatever talking points the leftist politicians want them to. Newly released George Floyd tapes from the body cams of the police officers involved in his death busts the media and political narrative about the death that set off protests and riots across the nation. In the videos, we see George Floyd resisting arrest. He's paranoid on drugs, having significant mental health issues. He asks the cops to put him on the ground instead of in the car, and he claims he can't breathe before they even touch him. Now, this doesn't make it right that the police officer kneeled on his neck and didn't stop even when Floyd passed out. The legal part of this case is still valid, but the political narrative that this was a race-based crime and George Floyd is a hero is just not true. But did the mainstream media report this to you? No, no. They barely mentioned that these tapes were released. The mainstream media doesn't care to report any of that to you, so we will. 